The Biden administration is urging the Supreme Court to not block the federal vaccine and testing mandate for large employers. The mandate requires that companies with more than 100 people ensure that their workers are fully vaccinated or undergo regular testing and wear face coverings at work. The Justice Department said if the court chooses to block the vaccine requirement, testing and mask mandates should remain in place. OSHA un of, of unveiled the new rule in November 4th. The Biden administration says it will not begin enforcing the employer mandate until at least January 10th. As people across the state are under COVID health orders, lawyers representing California inmates say prison staff are violating some of those orders and it's a big threat to the health of inmates. The group says staff are ignoring required COVID testing and there's no punishment from their supervisors. The lawyers are calling for Governor Newsom to follow a judge's order mandating all prison workers to be vaccinated. The Newsom administration is fighting that order, saying testing is sufficient and arguing that a vaccine mandate would leave prisons understaffed. Tonight we say goodbye to 2021, but we're not saying goodbye to COVID-19 just yet, unfortunately. With the highly transmissible Omicron variant, the number of daily cases of COVID are the highest we've seen in a while heading into the new year. Health experts are worried about people who have not been vaccinated, especially kids under the age of five who can't get the vaccine just yet. There's also concern about keeping kids in school full time and protecting our healthcare system as it bears the brunt of this pandemic. If our hospital systems go down because so many are out with COVID and hospitals are seeing this all over the country, then there's going to be no one there to care for you. ICU beds across the country are more than 77% full and more than 22% are COVID patients. Cases are skyrocketing among children. Data from the CDC shows there's been seven and a half million known pediatric infections in the United States and a third of those cases just in the past few months. So we wanted to know just how it's impacting children in our region and KTRA 3's Oracle Mana breaks down the numbers. I'm just having a good time with the kids. Families with young kids are ready to ring in the new year, but they're continuing to be cautious amid a COVID-19 surge. We're not really spending time with people that aren't vaccinated and it's just, you know, we're just staying at home and just trying to be as careful as we can. Others tell us they don't want to live in fear. You can't change your life because of something else is going on in the world. That's just going to have you stuck in the house for forever. Health officials saying 80 COVID-19 infected children were admitted to hospitals in California last week compared to 50 children during the last week of November. Thankfully, it is quite rare. Most children do fine. Dr. Mark Vaughn with Auburn Medical Group says parents should still be careful, but the numbers can also include kids who test positive when admitted for another reason. We don't know how many of those positive for Omicron are even symptomatic from it and not being hospitalized for something else. And for children hospitalized specifically for COVID. My understanding is that the cases are not as severe. KCRA 3 reached out to local hospitals to find out what they're seeing. UC Davis says their emergency department is not seeing a large uptick in pediatric COVID-19 patients. There are currently three hospitalized pediatric patients who have tested positive for COVID-19. Kaiser Permanente tells us they are seeing an increase in test positivity across all age groups, but they are not seeing an increase in pediatric hospitalizations. And Dignity Health says their COVID-19 hospitalization numbers are currently stable with only a few facilities experiencing mild increases, and the demographics show patients continue to be adults. Still, experts urge kids to get vaccinated and wear masks, and 10-year-old Jasmine is on board. Even though it's lunchtime and like I'm already finished with like my food, um, I always just keep my mask on afterwards. Orco Mana, KCRA 3 News. And health experts say unvaccinated children account for the majority of cases severe enough to land in the hospital. Students return back to the classroom on Monday and in some cases on Tuesday, but many students in schools don't have home at home test kits like the governor said they would. Last week, Governor Newsom announced the state was ordering 6 million tests from the federal government, hoping to make it easier for students to get tested before they go back to school. The Sacramento County Office of Education says it will be the entity getting this shipment for this area and it's going to be handing them out to school districts in the county. They're expecting to get about 248,000 testing kits one for each student. The superintendent says the county is still waiting to hear from the state on exactly when those tests will arrive. He anticipates that's going to happen early next week. We will have prearranged with all of the school districts how they will either pick the, the 
tips up or how we will deliver them. And that will all be set up so that as soon as the state's truck arrives, we will get them moving out the door to, to the school districts as quickly as possible. And some districts like the Sacramento City Unified School District did have some at home testing kits. They've already distributed them to students. That's because the state did send out smaller shipments of those tests to some districts earlier this month. And San Juan Unified School District just announced rapid testing is available for all students and staff on Sunday and Monday. You can see the locations on your screen. This is in person testing and not those at home kits. The FDA is planning to expand eligibility for the Pfizer COVID-19 booster shot. A source with knowledge of the plan tells NBC News that the agency will expand eligibility to children ages 12 to 15 in the coming days. This comes as COVID cases among children are on the rise. And after the FDA's authorization, the CDC and its advisory committee would be expected to hold discussions before they can get the final sign off.